to Bruisers, a podcast about beer, coffee, booze, and bruisers. I am your host, Roy John, and today we talk to Wanda Del Rey. We talk all about how she got into pro wrestling, what she has learned while being in the business, and so much more. This is such a fun conversation. Definitely check out Wanda Del Rey when you are looking for new and up-and-coming wrestlers to get into and start figuring out who they are and who's uh, who's coming up on the indie scene. She is definitely one of them. You're going to love this conversation. But first, make sure to sign up for our newsletter. It comes out twice a week. You get even more information about our guests. You get fun facts, and you get to find out what's happening with your favorite podcast, all about beer, coffee, booze, and bruisers. So without further ado, here is Wanda Del Rey. like to welcome the show wanda del rey how are you doing today ma'am very well thank you thanks for having me thanks for coming on mm-hmm. happy to so for those listening kind of paint us a word picture where are you at what's going on around you um this is the first podcast that i've done um, since going yes yeah, since starting wrestling and thought it was a good time to do so i think uh just last week marked like the first year um, of my wrestling career, going out there and working, um, working shows. Congratulations! Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like it's a milestone, and what a what a way to celebrate, right? Exactly. Yeah. Wow, what a way to! I wish I'd have known. I'd have uh, had some champagne ready or something. <laughs> it's all good. So, I mean, let's go all the way back in time. What is your earliest memory of pro wrestling? Um. Probably not being allowed to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Trying really hard to, uh, you know, make sure my, my folks weren't looking when uh, when Raw was on or, or SmackDown. I think I like SmackDown better. I mean, be I, it was a better writing for a while. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm, for sure. Yeah. So that was definitely my earliest memory. And then, um, yeah, you know, you go in and out of uh, watching it, as some people do. You lose interest. Other things get sidelined. Um, and then at one point it just got a hold on me, you know, and here we are (laughs) after all this time. Well, I mean, there's obviously that line between, you know, being a fan, loving the business, but then never fully getting into the business. What was it for you that I was, that you were like, let's try this. Let's see if I can actually do this. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, I'd have to say it was the pandemic. Uh. I think if uh, the pandemic hadn't happened, I probably wouldn't be wrestling. I had, uh, you know, in 2019 and around there, I had uh, drafted some emails to wrestling schools inquiring about joining, but I kept uh, deleting them. (laughs) Yeah, I uh, just felt like it was like a silly dream, a silly thing to do, not realistic and all that. Um. And then the pandemic happened and, um, you know, I saw people, you know, elsewhere kind of just like picking up things that they hadn't had time to do or, you know, the the motivation and things like that. And that was wrestling for me. I was like, wow, you know, life's short, things can happen and, Mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to have any regrets. So I, uh, I went ahead with it. So I, so you live in Canada. My brother also lives outside the Toronto area, and he would relay down to us how, I mean, we saw it on the news as well, but how much stricter it was up in Canada than it was other places. I mean, I'm in Texas, so for us, it was like it never happened. But uh, what was it like, you know, trying to find a school and when did, like, how far into the pandemic did they really kind of open up? Because I know there was obviously the closing of gyms and a lot of, um, you know, people having to stay inside anyway. So can you kind of walk us through that? What was that even like? Yeah. Um, I don't, I probably won't have the correct timeline for everything. Right. It was yeah. it was shifting a lot with the rules. I joined um, a wrestling school in like August, 2020. And I mm-hmm. believe for the first week or two, we were only allowed to train outdoors and oh. then we went indoors and there was limits on number of people and this and that. And eventually the restrictions got lifted for that type of activity. And then they got put back in place. Mm-hmm. And everything shut down and then it opened up slowly again. And we could train, but we couldn't do shows. And then we could do shows, but with very strict, you know, uh, parameters. Yeah, it was uh, it was a roller coaster. I'm glad that I wasn't, um, you know, in charge of anything during that time. That must have been a headache. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, so obviously you're learning inside the school with little people. And then once there are shows, there was probably, you know, very little people as well, because that didn't fully open up till much later. Mm -hmm. Was it, I mean, what is that like? Because we all, we all saw what happened with AEW and WWE where they didn't have anybody there. And then they slowly start trickling in people and, you know, pro wrestling is that live action cinema that needs to be in front of people because y'all are working off of the reactions of what's happening outside the ring as much as, you know, to what's happening inside the ring. What was that like when it came to, you know, you're still learning the business and then you're not getting the feedback that you truly need kind of, what was that like? Oh yeah. It's, it's not possible um, <laughs> to learn without, without other people telling you what's up for sure. Uh, but you know, you make do, right? Like uh, right. you do what you can. And I'm just really happy that that's behind us <laughs> for sure. Very true. Yeah. yeah so, sure. you know, getting backstage, I've been lucky enough in the past, uh, two or three years now to be, you know, a backstage interview person when it comes to local wrestling companies. And I know my experience, the first time I was backstage, I was a little kid freaking out, like, what am I doing? What am I supposed to do? You know, all that. Once you started being backstage and then also then performing out in front of the people, you know, what were you like inside? Like, I guess, walk us through that because, you know, being a fan, now you're doing it completely different situation mm -hmm, definitely um and with uh with good training you know you'll be prepared for kind of what to expect backstage and um you know how the shows are organized and what your role is but it's wrestling like anything can happen back there <laughs> <laughs> uh, and often it does and that's part of the fun too honestly um so you kind of just have to you know go with the flow mm -hmm. um but definitely like my first few shows i was so nervous but you know, they say once you go through that curtain, you have to leave that all behind, right? Right. Yeah, I think that was like some of the best feedback that I got um, early on. I was working a show in uh, in Hamilton. Um, I think it was like a tag team match. And uh, I got backstage and we asked a few people, you know, if they had a chance to, to watch it. And, um, you know, we we're just discussing it. And they were like, oh, you know, um, explain this, you know what happened here or there. And, uh, you know, I was talking to them about it and they're like, yeah, you know, that all makes perfect sense about, you know, things that could have gone better. And they're like, yeah, that makes perfect sense, but it doesn't matter at all. <laughs> like, uh, the only thing that matters is what happens on the other side of that curtain. So um, you got to make sure that, you know, you bring everything you can, um, at that point, no matter what happens anywhere else in your life, backstage, yada, yada, yada um the only thing that matters is on the other side of that curtain and that, that was a really great advice for me that's true though i mean i mean in a sense you could go for any uh work of life really because once you once you get to that uh place of business you gotta leave everything else behind and you know focus on whatever task you got in front of you that's true yeah yeah so i mean you're still learning and putting your move set together when it does come to putting your move set together how what is your process of adding or subtracting moves and uh what will work and what won't work well, that's a great question and it's such a fun process honestly yeah um yeah and i found that you know with my moveset coming together it just feels so good you know like it feels right when you have your own thing mm -hmm. um i just find that i like <laughs> I just like slamming people's faces into the mat. <laughs> it's like, yeah, all my moves are like, what if it was a face buster, you know? Mm. Um, so I try to, uh, you know, incorporate moves like that and then um, really look at the match and be like, if I'm going to, you know, wear out their face, that's going to have a, a big impact on how the whole match goes, right? It has mm. to, uh, it has to make sense that way. Um, and then just like, putting your own spin on things because there's some amazing moves out there that I'd love to do all the time, but I don't, I don't just want to take the exact ones, you know? Right. Yeah. Like the glam slam. That's like such a fun move. Oh, right. Yeah. That move looks amazing. Yeah. I'm actually surprised men, more men don't do that one. Yeah, yeah. me too. I've seen, I've seen a few do it. Yeah. Um, definitely. 
You should. Everyone should. <laughs> so who are some veterans that have you've kind of, I mean, you already, you kind of gave us a story earlier about some great advice. What are some veterans that you've kind of talked to and really kind of helped you out when you had questions come through this past year? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's all about the help that you get and, mm -hmm. you know, learning things uh, that other people have learned before you. So you don't have to make those mistakes on the, along the way. Um, and yeah, the Ontario scene is amazing for like knowledge sharing and just people there ready to help you out. Um, yeah, I've been lucky to be able to like train and get advice from folks like Mark Wheeler, mm. um, Shane Saber, and um, working at, um, you know, other promotions like the the promoters there that have been doing it for, you know, a lot longer than anybody's been wrestling even. Um, they have, uh, they have some great advice too, from, from their perspective. So I've asked, uh, I didn't think about asking this question until it got brought up in an interview before, but do you have a double stick tape tail? <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean? I don't know. A what story that, that you've, uh, had to use some double stick tape because, uh, this certain guest had to use some after, um, she didn't have some before and she wishes she had. Oh, double stick tape. Yes. Um, I just like heavy up on it, you know, like <laughs> leave no room for error. Like that's, that's my, uh, that's my motto. I actually ran out of it just now and uh -huh. I have to, like, I have to remember to order some before I, I do a next show. Cause I'm not going, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there you go. So go. Uh, write it down now, bring it up on your Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, we know what that's what's always in your bag. But what are some other standards that you now that you're traveling around and wrestling that you kind of keep around in your bag? Yeah, um, it's I, I don't want to bring too much because then you're lugging everything around. But right. I try to bring like uh, like those massage rollers and like mm. uh, you know those stretching cables. Things like that. I love to stretch. I, I got to stretch, you know? I'm not oh, ready yeah, to go yeah. unless, unless I'm stretched out. And um, Advil. Got to have Advil in there. Smart. If not for you, somebody's going to need it. Trust True. me. Yeah. Um, Tape. Just lots of tape. And it's tough. I haven't, like, I've been, yeah, I've been wrestling for a year, but I haven't found, like, the perfect wrist tape oh. yet. I've, uh, I've ordered, like, half a dozen different brands off Amazon and none of them are like quite right. And I like, I need, I need like to find a really good one and then just order it in bulk. But yeah, it's <laughs> trial and error. Like I want that perfect one. I mean, I love that you are even thinking about that is like, well, I have to figure out what the best tape is for myself. And then let's say somebody runs out of tape and they use yours and they're like, where'd you get this? They might love it too. So I like that you are actually thinking about, all right, well, this is tape, but that'll work. But you don't like it. So you need the perfect tape. Yeah, definitely. And I'm happy to help um, give some to others, but I hate being the person who's like, hey, do you have any? Do you have yeah. any risk tape? <laughs> That's no fun. <laughs> so as much as this is a physical sport, it's also very much of a mental one as well. What kind of uh, mental workouts do you try to do? Yeah, I've been trying to do the med the meditation. It's mm -hmm. tough. Um, and then, um, yeah, just mindfulness. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a mental one for sure. Uh, I'm lucky in training that we do a lot of, um, you know, memory drills. Oh, nice. And yeah. Just like, um, you know, working out a match in a way that, um, is like really complicated just so if you have a match that's half as complicated as that, you'll be fine. You know, oh. <laughs> uh, memory is so, so important. And like mine's gotten so much better since I first started wrestling. And I got it. That's got to be good, like in general, in life, you know, for yourself to have a great memory. So I'm happy that that's part of it for sure. It is true. Yeah. I had heard somebody backstage say one time, you know, as much as we're on our phones, there's memory apps that we could honestly use. So download a memory app and just and use that as well. Oh, no, I can't do the app.